you know how people right. say, you know, go to your happy place and it's the beach and, you know, the ocean waves and reading a book on the beach with a pina colada. Also awesome. But in the place of life, when my routine has gone out the window and I'm just feeling really chaotic, the the book on the couch with the cocoa is the happy place for me. <laughs> is- Hello, writers and crafters. I'm Valerie Isan. And I'm Eric Mertz. And this is episode 128 of the podcast. It is August 30th, 2023, as we record this. Today, we're talking about returning to routine after chaos, which both of us have just experienced. So (laughs) we'll talk more about that (laughs) later. Uh, We do have a new patron, Joe Bartlett, has uh, returned to Patreon dot com slash Valerie Isan, I-H-S-A-N. Welcome, Joe. Thanks so much for joining us. For as thank low you, as Joe. A, thank you, Joe. For as low as a dollar a month, you can get a postcard from me, a shout out on the podcast. We can make announcements for you on the air, kind of like, you know, free ad campaign. Uh, at other tiers, the benefits increase. There's, you know, of course, free books, accountability stuff, scene and analysis, mastermind calls, retreat tickets. So there's lots of goodies at patreon.com slash Valerie Isan. Patreon.com slash strange air stories. You can go to for Eric's short stories in the paranormal mystery genre. So that's exciting. And I like those inspirational videos that you do. Uh, it reminds me I'm a little behind on making those. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So. Yes, that's part of the chaos. <laughs> We've added part of the chaos. Coming yeah. back from chaos. That's our, yeah. I think that should be a t-shirt too. Coming back from chaos. <laughs> it's a conversation the... starter. Right. <laughs> so a group, uh, a group coaching cohort starts in just a couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about starting up my group coaching again. That's going to start September 12th. Um, it goes for three months. We meet weekly and that's a, a $500 for all three months. Works out to about $167 a month, something like that. So if you need a monthly payment, I can certainly do that. Um, And if you are a podcast listener, you can use the discount code podcast and that'll get you 10% off as well. So ValerieIsan.com slash shopping for more information about that group coaching. Uh, What about you? Do you have any announcements before we go into author update? I'm really not out of the chaos yet, Valerie. So I get announcements. I don't have announcements. It's no announcements yet. All right. Do you want no to start on the yet. author update or do you want me to? Give me, a, give me like two weeks. I'll have announcements galore, but not today. <laughs> um, author update. Yeah. Well, if anybody's watching this, like I've been, I'm moving and that's um, been a big preoccupation. So I'm like kind of, my life's a bit gutted, but I continue to, um, I'm finishing up the rewrite of my next novel. Um, it's coming along really well. Um, and just, yeah, I'm really surprising myself with some new scenes, um, some new, um, you know, I'll look back on my notes and I'll see these things that say like, raise the stakes. I love when I make those notes for myself, raise the stakes. And I'll look at it and be like, what am I, you know, what does that mean? Um, and I think part of it is just, you know, kind of being in a bit of chaos and being in a bit of like just transition. I've like, I've written a few things that are, I think, rawer than they would have been had I not like, had I been in my, my good space, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so I've, I've, I've just added a few like really well-timed raw scenes and moments for characters that. Uh, I'm grateful, I guess, for the chaos. So yeah, Mm. finishing that book up should have that done in the next week or so. And then I am going to take a little bit of a break from writing in that series. Just I'm going to take the the break to do the book launch. And I have just a few other little projects that I'm going to work on in the meantime. Um, So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to September and October just as an opportunity to get the new book, you know, get the new book out and write some things that are outside the series, finish some, some short stories and things that I've had sitting around on my desk that I'm interested in and need to commit the time to. So 
what's going on with you? Um, well, I just got back from a fantastic writing retreat. It was so awesome. This is the one that I host every year at um, TP Village in Marcola. And it's just so gorgeous out there. And it's got such good juju. <laughs> and I really love it. We were so Is that out. J-U-J-U? Yes, is I that think how we so. Spell that? That's how I spell that. Okay, for the show notes, it's for the J-U-J-U. Show notes, good juju. Um, yeah, we were sold out. So we had a full house and um, everybody everybody got along and they were laughing there was a lot of laughing and the food was amazing I did a feedback form for the first time and I got Mm. really great feedback um, specifically around the workshops that I run Um, what I've been doing for the last three years is um, having a short like one hour lecture after breakfast each of the three days and then just sort of let them go for writing or, you know, I'm, I'm around for talking shop or, you know, helping someone plot out something or whatever, but, um, but the, the structured instruction is in the morning after breakfast. So the feedback I got, um, some said wanting an afternoon workshop, like in addition, or something where we could like actual, like quote unquote workshop pieces you know, so, so more feedback. Um, So it was really interesting to get, I got several people that said some version of that. So I want to try to, you know, next year, accommodate that, like switch it around a little bit or add something to it or, or uh, yeah. So that was really interesting and, and, and really good feedback. I had the thought that people wanted more of that. I, I would have thought they wanted more, you know, I, I was worried that, that they wanted less than that, you know, like less, less days that were interrupted by instruction, but no, in fact, they wanted more instruction. So that was really interesting. Um, while I was there, Eric, the lightning bolt came down and I got a whole new novel in my head, all the characters and I plotted it all out. And that's super exciting because I've been like in this nonfiction headspace for a really long time and I've been wanting to get back into the fiction but no story was really coming to me right right. so and I I kind of felt like I mean this is also you know the end of August so like that year is two-thirds of the way done but I don't say that don't say that (laughs) I have a lot to do in this year still right I I I had planned on like writing a whole bunch of nonfiction. those were I had all these nonfiction projects lined up and and I'm still working on them too, but but I'm super happy that I have this fiction project that I'm actually going to, I mean, I'm going to tie up, I'm going to finish up the co-writing job, um, that book, and and probably go ahead and put out the, the nonfiction is still going to do, but I'm going to be writing fiction right. alongside, at least dipping my fingers in, you know, and, and fleshing out some more scene work you know, and work on the outline a little bit more do some research and stuff. So it will be a historical novel, which I've never done before. Um, I mean, I've played around. I want all the readers that. to, I want all the re, uh, the listeners to know that the, the surprise that I showed when you said that was genuine. We talked for about a half an hour before recording this podcast and Valerie didn't tell me that she'd gotten this novel idea. <laughs> she didn't tell me. So that was a genuine surprise. We'd caught up on a lot of things, but I didn't hear about the novel. I'm happy to hear about that novel. <laughs> yes, too. I'm, I'm super I'm, excited. That makes so. me very happy. And of course, I didn't see your response. I'm going to have to watch the video now because I'm looking at the camera, <laughs> not at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe my response was more muted than I thought, actually, because in my head, I was like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> That's great news. <laughs> So yay. It's like I'm super this is excited. like the author's like, you know, this is like an author's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. It's like a yeah. it's like a pregnancy announcement. It's like, oh my yeah. god, I'm writing a book. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hand flapping. I'm so excited. <laughs> so oh, that great. was really awesome. Um we are reflooring our house. Not us personally. We're having someone come in and do it so it won't look janky. Yeah. But that also means we're kind of like moving, you know, we still have to pack up all the books, move all the furniture out of the rooms. And uh, it's a big reflowing project. We're doing most of the house. 
So that's happening in a couple of weeks. So we're this weekend is going to be all about trying to get as much out of, you know, off the floors as possible. And, and then we'll move the furniture out into the backyard <laughs> the day before they come. But I still can't um, believe we're doing that. That's crazy. And then next week, I'm going to be teaching a master class at the Southwest Washington Writers Conference. So that is super, super exciting. I'm really, really, oh, really yeah. looking forward to that. I haven't been to an in-person conference in a while, like years. <laughs> I've taken like online conferences throughout the pandemic, and, but I haven't been to an in-person conference um, yeah, oh, since cool. pre-pandemic. So that'll be exciting. And I've never taught a master class before. So I'm, I mean, I've taught this particular topic before, but not in, in the realm of I'm the master class speaker. Like that's, <laughs> I feel like that has clout. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm that. teaching, I have a an hour and a half course <laughs> that I'm teaching in Alaska at the end of next month. And they asked me to make it a master class. So Ooh. I'm going to take some tips from you on master classing. So master classing. Masterclass teaching in Alaska. That's pretty rad. And you've never been to Alaska, right? Never been to Alaska. I'm Neither super excited. <laughs> I'm just going to say super this. I don't think anyone... I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say this. Like, I'm not saying it's good. Ah! Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for Alaska. There's an author update, I guess. Like I, I will be teaching a class in Alaska. Um, and I'm also like in the process of working something out with, um, next spring in, um, the Pikes, Ple the Pikes Peak Writers Conference to go teach there. Oh, I don't um, know about them. Pikes Peak. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's in Oregon, right? Mary's Peak? No, it's in no. Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Absolutely. I've I've set the goal to um, blanket the sort of everything west of Colorado, and just hit all those conferences. Try to create relationships with all those different writers organizations. So mm -hmm. Colorado, um, Colorado. Maybe I'll be coming to see you. What are you reading? I am reading a Lucky Red by Claudia Cravens. It's a western, hmm. but Got it's it. brand new. Sounds like it. It's cool. She's a prostitute. The main the character. character. Yeah. Okay. Not not Claudia Grimms. <laughs> not the person you named, right? I was gonna... <laughs> no, Lucky uh, Red. Yeah, she's she's a prostitute <clears throat> and the Wild West. It. Yeah. So it's and in Dodge, Dodge City. The only got way it. I know Dodge is the the phrase to get out of Dodge. Get out of Dodge. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's all I know about Dodge. So it's really cool. I'm actually riveted. I haven't read a Western in a long time. Mm, I like a good Western every once in a while. I've had this yeah. goal to read Lonesome Dove my forever. I've never, oh my gosh. never read it, but it's I want a doorstopper, it. isn't it? It is a big book. And I have a friend whose family watches the miniseries the the Friday after Christmas, uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving every year. Oh, um, what a cool and they've tradition. done it for like, yeah, it's their family tradition. And so from that, like I've thought like, well, I've got to read the book. If I'm ever going to get invited over to watch the miniseries, I've got to read the book first. <laughs> That's the writer in me. Yeah. Um, I just finished a book you might like. And if any, I don't read a lot of nonfiction. I just finished um, never a book called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss, who is a, he's involved with a project that I'm working on as a ghost writer. Um, but I, he is the, he was, I don't know if he still is the, one of the FBI's lead hostage negotiators. Okay. And the whole book is about like the technique of negotiation that the FBI uses in hostage negotiations and how those principles of negotiation apply to anything, you know, getting a hotel room, hmm. an argument with your spouse. Like it, it just talks a lot about how people process ver conflict verbally and how to work with people. Uh, it's a fascinating book. Um, and when you go out and try a few of those techniques, they actually work. Like oh. I actually like used one uh -huh. the other day, just kind of like there's this, some of the techniques in there like are very simple. You can use them in almost any customer service interaction. And uh, yeah, they, they work. Some of them work. Um, so it's a fascinating nonfiction book. It's like my annual nonfiction read. Um, which is, I should read more nonfiction. 
but I just I picked up, you've probably have seen this, Sea of the Sea of Tranquility by um, Emily St. John Mandel. Mandel. I've seen it. Um, I haven't read it. I've seen that cover everywhere and it's just such a beautiful cover. And it was, it, I was going to pick up a different book when I was done with Chris Voss, but this was at the library just staring at me. And so jumping the stack, there's another thing for our like yeah. t-shirt jump, you know, this book jumped the stack. Um, it's really interesting. It's like metaphysics and time travel and science fiction and beautifully written. Like I, yeah, it's really amazing. So cool. Yeah. Did you get all of your Mexico reading done in Mexico? Yeah, I read Duma Key, the Stephen King book that I had, you know, targeted for this, uh -huh. um, which was good. I love Stephen King, but he's his books have changed in a way that I like, and that also make me miss old Stephen King. Mm. Um, so the books are just a lot more gradual they're a lot they're slower um not, not that i need a rip roaring story but there's a lot more time taken and I, I guess i just wanted some of that old like you know 30 pages in and you you get a little bit of the you get a little bit of the gore you get a little bit of the, the scare um he just doesn't do that anymore i also read a book called camp slaughter which was kind of a, a horror book that was Kind of horror books <laughs> huh? with a title like Camp Slaughter. I would say that's kind of a horror book. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a horror book, but it was it was well done. It it wasn't exactly in the literary horror genre, but it was. I, I think one of the things that happens with like horror books is that they're very they can they can be reductive, right? They can just turn the whole art of storytelling into a slasher film, and mm -hmm. that you know, forego the character here. Let's just make this, make this thing bleed. Um, this one was, you know, it, it, it was a capital H horror book, but it did not um, short on the character. It didn't short on the the setting. It had, you know, an interesting way in. Um, so yeah. And it was a super easy read. It was the, it was the book that I picked up when I got, I didn't want to cart my like big Stephen King book around to like the resorts and things. I would mm -hmm. just like, this was, I had the ebook of, of camp slaughter and I would just like read that on my phone. Um, so yeah. Cool. Good one. It's, it's a really good one. I'm going to read more of Sergio Gomez's books. All right. Awesome. And don't forget to check out um, like how to sell a haunted house that Grady Hendrix. He's got a lot of yeah. books that I think you might like in that horror genre, but how to sell a haunted house. Yeah. What, what are you, what are you pointing at? Well, I was going to say my book list that used to be on the wall right oh. over here. <laughs> um, that's like number one on books to go buy at pals next time I go to pals, but my book list is missing and I oh, feel no. really like disarmed because <laughs> I don't, I'm not surrounded by my things. Oh. I have a funny story about that, but that's going to make the entrance to this podcast like way too long but shortly just really quick because I can't like do that and then not tell the story I was at Tsunami because I work there Mondays now just to fill in a, like a staff hole and you know gives me some extra cash and it's just fun to see right. people that I used to work with and and see some of the customers customers were all happy to see me it was sweet and fun but anyway um, I was turning in the book order for to Ingram and I remembered this book that I wanted to get about coaching, uh, life coaching, or uh, yeah, it's a nonfiction book mm -hmm. on business. And I couldn't, I used to have a little notebook under the counter that had like a book wish list. And every time I was wanting to order a book, you know, so I kept track of all of the titles and I didn't have that here at the bookstore mm -hmm. anymore. I have it here at, at home on my desk. So I was kind of panicking, like, I got to turn in the order and what's the name of that one book? And so I had mm. to like go to my Kindle, like preview list on my phone, on the, the right. book app, you know, that has all of the, all of the books. And, and I had downloaded a preview of the, of the book. So I found the title at the last minute and stuck it in there before right. we ordered, <laughs> but yeah, missing to do or missing a book list is a little bit unsettling. Just surrounding, you know, we, we surround ourselves with comfort stuff. And when it's not there, we 
know why it's comfort stuff because it brings us comfort. So that is a fantastic segue, Eric, into coming back from chaos. See how I did that? That was intentional. It wasn't. (laughs) I meant to do that. (laughs) All right. So, so yeah, I think that that's a good point to have. I don't know if it's the best first point to have, but I do think that trying to, I mean, it does really go back to self-care, doesn't it? You know, trying to, if you're in a chaotic place where your regular routine is just out the freaking window for whatever reason, it is nice to be able to pull in those tools and that environmental um, comfort, you know, like sitting on the couch under a blanket with Coco reading a book is like the, the thing, the happy place that I think about when I'm like super chaotic. You know how people right. say, you know, go to your happy place and it's the beach and, you know, the ocean waves and reading a book on the beach with a pina colada. Also awesome. But in the place of life, when my routine has gone out the window and I'm just feeling really chaotic, the the book on the couch with the cocoa is the happy place for me. <laughs> what is it for you? When you, when you try to like was... imagine something to keep you not... I don't know if the anxiety gets high from the chaos. Where do you go inside? The anxiety definitely gets high from the chaos. I mean, I was just traveling and I realized I have some travel anxiety from time to time. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I don't know exactly. I think it's all, when you said happy place, like right now, um, again, because I'm moving, (laughs) happy place is like a place that I can... I don't have to look for things in boxes. I don't have to I, like things are where they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. The there's sort of a there's that routine. Um, but generally, like I actually this is kind of odd, but like I like taking a walk with my dog. I mm-hmm. like being wherever that is. Um, my whole vision of like for moving into this house is like w- with my dog, we're gonna go learn the neighborhoods. We're gonna mm-hmm. learn the houses on the, you know, that's kind of a fun conversation for like my wife and I too, is to be like, like, Oh, did you, you know, that house on this corner, you know, that house on that corner, have you seen those people? It's like, we kind of do this, like, we're just very neighborhoody people. So I'm, I really like being in my, I like being within a mile of home. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's like my comfort zone. It's just like (laughs) exploring the little space around my home and Mm -hmm. getting to know the nooks and crannies. Um, I do also like the couch with a book, um, and the fire, if I can have mm-hmm. like my, and probably not cocoa. I'm not a big chocolate, hot chocolate guy, but I'll take like a cup of coffee or a, a whiskey or something. So. Mm, there you go. Hot toddy. Right. I think we just, you know, we talked a little bit about this, I think before the summer, when we talked about if you have kids, mm-hmm. you have if you have things in your life that you're responsible for and that the sort of the responsibility shifts, which is what summer is like the school is not taking them anymore. They're yours now for 12 weeks. Go take care (laughs) of those kids of your own kids. It creates chaos. It's okay to call those things chaos. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a little bit of guilt that we create for ourselves when we put that like, I came back from a vacation. Vacations are chaos. You're gone for like, even if it's great, you're gone for a while. You got to come back and recalibrate. So yeah. It's okay I was only gone at, for let's see, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I was gone for four days for this writing right. retreat, three technically. But uh, yeah, I came back to 186 emails in my inbox that I have mm. not yet gone through. I think I'm down to 160 or something. So yeah, that's going to take me a while to, I mean, most of it's junk and you can just delete, 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 but some of it's legit and you got to like, what do I do with this email? And (laughs) I'll look at this later and oh, this goes into that You don't check emails when you're on vacation or when you're out doing that stuff? Um, If I I'm not saying that like you're crazy. I'm just saying your method is to not check email while you're gone. Um, Not necessarily. So I do check it, but my, um, I, well, all I'm looking for is a fire, you know, like I'm just looking right. for like a, a client request or, you know, something that somebody needs something right away. And, and then I could take care of that quickly instead of the fire it would create if I left it alone for four days and didn't get back to, you know, 
but for the most part, no, I don't. Hmm. I definitely address email while I'm gone. Drives everybody crazy, but I will. <laughs> I still get up in the morning, still get on the email. I still respond to everything then because I have such a phobia of losing that contact. Mm. That I want to lose that contact. You know, I want to be in a different space where I'm not reachable. But, but yeah, I still. I guess. I guess that is still a tether. I still check just to make sure there's no problems. I feel like the email that you send that the 10 minute email session while you're on vacation prevents the two hour stress when you get home. I just mm -hmm. look at it like there's going to be enough when you get home anyway. Yeah. That you may as well just like tick off the, you know, put, you may not be able to put the fire out, but you can at least address the fire mm -hmm. in a con constructive way. Um, so, so that's kind of a preventative measure for the chaos then you're saying so go ahead and and do the small things that might alleviate like don't work on your vacations but no don't work on your vacation but i think that like again like you're running a business if you're mm -hmm. running a business um i don't think there's anything wrong with it's i, I don't know i don't think that like I don't buy this, like, I don't think that it makes your vacation or your time any better if you, for me at least, if I, like, I don't hold on to this illusion that, like, I cut it off and I pick it back up. Like, that doesn't provide me any extra feeling of relief or it doesn't make me stress less to do that. I think, like, it's it's an extreme. I don't like dealing with extremes. I don't like the, like, I'm not doing this ever for this period of time. I feel like it's you recalibrate like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to address every issue that comes to me, but for 15 minutes a day, I'm going to address the things that keep things moving. Maybe I'm more extremist than you are because I do look Can't for that. Like when I go on a writing retreat, <laughs> I don't want to check my emails. In fact, there was one person there um, who needed, so we had a photographer for the first time at the, oh, at wow. the um, getting big. place. And, and she, you know, needed, um, you know, like photo waivers. She needed, she needed permission to, to take right. photos of people and to make it easy. And she was flying in from another state. So she didn't have like a bunch of forms for people to sign. So to make it easy, she was like, just text me your phone number and your email address or text me your email address and I'll mail it to you afterwards. And she got verbal confirmation from everyone. Right. And then she would make it legit when they got home. And so this one particular retreat person was like, I'm not turning on my phone. Sorry. You know, I have verbal confirmation. <laughs> you can take my phone number. Here's my phone number, but I'm not turning on my phone. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I, I don't, because the, what I know me and I know that if I open up my email address and I, you know, go through the emails, which again, like I just scan really quick to see if there's anything that's blowing up at home that I need to address, but mostly I don't, <sighs> it's like waking up in the middle of the night and keeping your eyes closed to pee so that you can fall back asleep when you get back in bed. <laughs> I don't know about, I, mean, I can't talk to people. I can't like go get a drink of water. I can't like check on right, things. Right. I can't open my eyes really, or I will not go back to sleep. So yeah. that's kind of the way it is for me on vacation. I don't really want, if I have to do it, I'll just sort of do it with one eye half open, <laughs> but I don't want to like, okay, now I'm checking my emails because then it will take me like two hours to release that, you know, like I'm in the flow of, okay, now I'm working, you know, I have to, I don't know if I'm saying right. this right. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I understand. I understand exactly what you're yeah. saying. And I feel that. Boy, that's me in the middle of the night. Like, I don't want to break the seal of whatever. Like, it's just. <laughs> I can't really I, wake I, that's up. What I don't want to like really do my job. I just need to be on retreat right now. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I've just always been of, I, I don't like, and I'm not saying that, that, that um, I think our culture kind of has this, like, I didn't do this for 30 days and here's what happened. It's like, we have this obsession with like fasting, kind of like fasting culture. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just going to give something completely up. And for me that I've tried those things. I've done those things. I've definitely taken trips where I didn't pick up a, an email. Um, 
that also wasn't when I was like the lead everything in the business, but mm -hmm. alas, I just also don't, I don't feel like that sort of fasting culture creates good habits. I think it, for me, it's more important to like, I'm going to create a healthy relationship to work where when I'm working at home, like today, work is my sole focus until I go pick up my kid from school. Um, I can also scale that back when I'm on vacation and give work 2% of my focus for 20 minutes. And that's it. Like I'm not for me, that's like far more important than again, just like sealing it off. Because also, listen, I was just out on vacation for eight days. There's a lot of dead time. There's a lot of dead time. Like there's a lot of times when I'm like, what are, what are we doing for the next three hours? I don't, what are we doing? Oh, that, that'd be like, where I'm reading or napping or something like I, or just looking right, at the river, like, you know, for eight hours. Okay. You I'm just read for here. two hours, you, <laughs> you nap for two hours and then you still have a bunch of people in the house that are waiting. You know, we still have an hour till dinner. Like, I don't know, open my email, look at it, bang out a few answers to questions. Um, so that's your version also of have one to say, I open. It's my version of one I open. Okay. Um, and because I, I know that I'm not going to, unless there's the fire. Uh -huh. um, but I also say this to my wife too, because she gets, she, you know, as a massage therapist, all of her clients are pretty much regulars. She uh -huh. has new clients occasionally, but I tell her like any new incoming email is a job that could be a year's salary. Yeah. I have to be able to respond to that because mm -hmm. if I lose that big job, um, any incoming inquiry, I, I had one earlier this summer that I almost dismissed and then realized like, oh, this job is like a massive, great job. I have got to take, you know, I've got to address yeah, this yeah. differently. And so, that's, I guess, yeah. to be fair, that that is what I'm looking for when I'm quickly just scanning the emails to see yeah. if there's something I need to address right then. That's what I'm looking for. A new client request right. or yeah, a current client. So, so what are you doing now? You just got back from eight days of travel. You're in the middle of moving. You're not out of the chaos yet, but, but no, you, you're, not. you're still like pining for routine and <laughs> what is if, it that you do when you come back? If from the chaos? chaos was like an ocean wave and I was a surfer, like I've just, I'm just now coming down off the trough. Like most of my house has moved. The rest of the most of the rest of the moving is by movers. So yeah, we're kind of um I do like very similarly to like I I I'm good at identifying what's possible, what's not possible. You know, I, I'm good at identifying energy levels and my own and I and only putting myself in as deep as I can go. Like today I'm when we talked about this earlier, like I'm kind of frazzled. It's just like it's, I'm not going to do any heavy duty work today, nor am I going to do any tomorrow or Friday. Um, I set my week up knowing that although I had my schedule, I also was going to be, there was the potential for interruption. There was the potential for outside. Um, something might come up, you know, I might have to just like throw the something in the car and drive it over. Um, so I definitely set myself up so that it was like a soft landing kind of week um, that I wasn't going to be like pushed too hard. So next week, I anticipate on Tuesday having my desk all ready to go and being, yes, I'll be still transitioning, but I'll be, uh, next week I've scheduled myself a much more uh, <laughs> rigorous week. I guess that's the word. Robust, but I know that's what I was not... thinking of. <laughs> robust. We robust. love those R words, right? Yes. A more robust week next week. And that's fine. Um, so I just I knew a... that couldn't be this week. So I have questions then. So you said that you look at your week and kind of like assess, um, I don't know, I, my first thought was schedule boundaries, but that's not the right word. But like you said, you wanted to plan a soft landing. So you knew that these three days, you were going to have stuff that was going to interrupt you maybe. So you couldn't do this right. work, but you could do this work. So you, but every week you, you do this anyway, this isn't like a re-entry thing. This is something that you just do as a, as a business habit. Always. So when do you every do Thursday, that? Every Thursday, every Sunday. So every Thursday, every Sunday, I'm going to write this down because you know, this is good. This is good stuff here. 
every Thursday. Every Thursday, I every Thursday I like I do the whole like what am I get what do I need to do to finish this week to get it to make sure that I can close the doors for two days without you know leaving everybody happy, myself included. Um, at the end of that, like that includes a little weekend time. I always do a couple of hours of work on the weekend. Um, and most of that is Sunday when I set up the whole week. Now I, on Sunday, I set up the entire week, Monday through Friday, but things change, you know, mm -hmm. the, the things come up, things interrupt. Um, and when so do you do that on I, Sunday, I, is it like a after usually, dinner, look at your calendar for half an hour? Or? Yeah. Usually Sunday night, uh, Lisa puts Elijah to bed and, and she does the sort of end of the night routine on Sunday. And then I come downstairs and just, yeah, I just. I post my weekly blog and I kind of round everything into shape and make sure I'm ready to go. Um, and that just, it's, it's also like, I think doing it a couple of times a week just acknowledges that the week itself creates chaos and the best laid plans create chaos. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just have to be able to, to stop yourself on Thursday morning and say, oh, okay, well, now I have two phone calls on Friday afternoon. And especially when you're on an appointment phone call based business, it's like people cancel. I had three phone calls scheduled for Monday. Three people canceled. Wow. What a drag. Three I, people cancellations. <laughs> I hate it too, but it's like, I've got it built in. Like I pushed that person to Friday. I pushed Friday back to Monday. I did all that stuff and I was fine. Okay. Two more quick questions before we we're almost out of time. Um, what is your anchor when you come back from whatever the chaos was? What's your anchor? What's the, what's the thing or what's the thing during in the chaos that anchors you? Like for me, it's, oh. um, for me, it's usually my morning routine. Uh -huh. You know, like that's the thing that I can do without thinking, you know, it's not, it's, yeah. Do you have some sort of anchor if, if you're feeling like really frazzled? The thing that gets you is it cleaning off your desk? Is it, you know, like environmental? Is it self care? Is it walking the dog? That's a hard question. I think I have a lot of anchors. I mean, I, I have a very like, you know, I'm very introverted in a lot of my habits. So for me, just like getting that introverted morning time. Mm -hmm. is important it just it it fuels the day it gives me the energy and I oh, give nice. myself like little like little introvert stops in an extroverted world um throughout every day mm -hmm. um my anchor though like again I just I'm never not I always give myself permission to if you have an idea then you get to write the idea down like I always, I always, I had a, I got a great story idea on the plane, on the ride down. I kept my notebook out. I just, whenever I had a few extra minutes, you know, we, we were in this beautiful tropical place with a lagoon and a beach and a, and a pool and a, like, I would just go sit. My brother-in-law loves the Grateful Dead. I only have about three hours, hours of Grateful Dead in any given week. And so <laughs> after three hours on the first day, it's like, I'm going to go sit somewhere else for a little while yeah. <laughs> and drink my beer and like work on this story idea. Uh -huh. um, and so I think I've just always get, like, I anchor myself in permission to be creative all the time. Cool. What about, so then when, when you re, when you return, then you've come back now, what's the first thing that you do to, to oh, reestablish routine? Um, I, yeah, I think it was just, like, it was, the first day was really broken up, you know, like, we didn't get home until, like, three in the morning, I then, like, didn't sleep until five, I was mm -hmm. up at seven, it was, and there was a lot to do that day, I think, like, I, I think what I do that anchor in that first day is like low X those first couple of days is low expectations. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just, I don't give myself a lot of have tos again, unless there's a fire. Mm -hmm. It's just here. I came home on a Thursday and Thursday and Friday. I had some things that I wanted to get done and they were the softest check boxes. So mm -hmm. I, I guess easy check boxes. Yeah. Are it's that soft landing. I like that. 
yeah low, low like expectations one of, one of the things landings one of the things that i gave myself to do on the first day is cancel your la fitness account because i'm moving to a town where there's no la fitness and so that was like i felt so good because the first thing i did on that morning was i called <laughs> and i said let's cancel and i checked a box and i was like ah i'm, I'm done for the day <laughs> You know, and it was great. Like I, I owed some people some money. So I made some payments to people like little things that took mm -hmm. no brain power, mm -hmm. little things that take no brain power, like gives you that checkbox confidence, gives me that checkbox confidence. Um, and the other thing I'm, I'm now realizing what it is. I'm looking at my to-do list from that Thursday. I had a bunch of just authors that I had been noticing on social media, um, people that I just been in connection with. And I thought, I'm just going to email all these people, just mm. make friendly contacts. Like, Hey, mm -hmm. I haven't talked to you in a while. We used to do a story swap. You want to do one soon. That got me into the community, into the world and without expectations. That's awesome. Well, and then I wrote a thousand words. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that primed the pump then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Awesome. Well, we are now officially out of time today. So we, we will have to wrap up this phone call. Thank you so much for talking with me about coming back from chaos. I haven't been on vacation. Well, I guess I have. I did the the, the retreat and I'm also moving. So we're kind of on the same place, actually. Parallel lives. <laughs> Parallel lives. Parallel lives. So I thought it would be fun to talk about something softer like what do I do with my anxiety if I'm moving and <laughs> ah and the frazzle yeah what do I do with the frazzle so but thanks look, you're for getting your new ideas. floors I'm getting a new house right like you're just you also have to look at the new like yeah yes this really sucks right now but wow this is going to be great when it's, it's done awesome <laughs> that was uh, never me before if we were doing this podcast 10 years ago I would have never been able to say that but I really think it's important to like my new office is so much cooler. I can't wait to do a podcast in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Is it going to be next week? Yay. Next Will it week? be next week? Next week? All right. Yes. Until next oh, yeah, week, yeah. we will see the new office. <laughs> <laughs> I'll but take you on now. a little tour, which which will be like boxes back here, boxes <laughs> back here. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks for take talking care. with me. Happy writing, everybody. Bye-bye.